let's begin with that. Um, went back home, did some late model races. How did that go for you? How did it feel to go back home and be back on some familiar track, um, especially after doing some tracks that you've never done in a car that you've never been in? Um, what was it like to go back home and uh, be a part of something that was familiar for, uh, for a change? Yeah, it was good to be in my familiar super late models that I've been racing for a few years now. But we were at a track I've never been at before. We raced at Jefferson with the Arca Midwest Tour, and I fell in love with that racetrack. It was so much fun. Um, we were running really good all day in practice and and in the race, but our brakes went out within, like, 20 laps into the race. So we didn't get to finish it. We had some bad luck. But other than that, um, with the Super Late, it's been going really good. We've been really fast, but we've just had, had some bad luck with with the car. Um, what was that track like? What was it that you liked and fell in love with that track? What 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 um, characteristics about that track that made you uh, love that track? So one and two is really really sharp and flat. You have to like lift at the flag stand to make it in the back corner, and then three and four is a little bit wider and more banked, and you run up by the wall. So. It's like you have to be really consistent and focus really hard on your points or else you'll mess up your whole lap. Sounds, uh, definitely sounds uh, interesting. Um, and um, definitely uh, have to approach both those uh, those ends of the track differently. Um, then you went to Elko. Um, where is that track, first of all? It's um, in Minnesota. And what so was I, that I don't really know where. And, um, that I've raced there with my super late before. I've loved that track ever since the first time I've been to it. And you just have to be really smooth and patient there. And we were running really good there with the Arca car. Um, and then I think we got spun out with 20 to go or something. We were, I think we were in like 7th or 6th when we got spun out. Now, where did you uh, end up finishing for that race? I think we were uh, 13th in that race. All right. Um, what did you learn from that track? Um, was it anything you could take to Pocono, first of all? Um, but being in the Arca car, and obviously this is something that, you know, you, you, you're kind of building your, your – uh, I'm not going to use the word resume, but trying to trying to familiarize yourself with the car as you're working to eventually, hopefully, have a, a, a full season in the Arca Series. Um, what did you learn with learn from that track? That what did you take away from that track that um, you're going to use moving forward? Oh, uh, after Toledo, we really needed to work on our restart, mm-hmm. and so that was like one of my main things I really wanted to work out work um, at Elko and we got way better at them and really good at those at Elko and then the other one we started struggling with lap traffic so that that hurt us a lot was all the lap traffic and so going into Pocono I needed I had my restarts down then so I needed to work on the lap traffic and we still struggled a lot at Pocono with the lap traffic so going into in the more races with the ARCA car, I definitely need to work on that. Now, compared to the ARCA series, compared to your, your local stuff, um, is there a lot more lap traffic that you've got to deal with? I'm assuming because maybe the races are longer that there might be more of that going on. Um, is there a lot more lap traffic that you deal with with the ARCA series versus what you normally deal with at, a, at your local track? Yeah, I at my local track, we deal with almost no lap traffic at all. So when we went to these ARCA races, Toledo wasn't too bad. There was a few cars every probably eight, ten laps that we were lapping, but Elko was every other lap, and I've never had to deal with that before, so that was very new to me. How how hard is it to adjust to the the different speeds of the cars and, and Passing these lap cars, I you know I I can only imagine you you trying to, especially describing the track where you, you kind of let go of the gas 
basically the flag stand and going to one, two, and then you're you're angling a different in three, four. So now you're, you're trying to time these corners and these angles because they're different. And then on top of that, you're trying to time and gauge the speed of the lap traffic. Also, the, the traffic or you know the guys competing around you. Um, how how difficult is that for a driver, especially young and, and new to all this as yourself? Um, and what were they telling you in your ear to try, kind of help guide you through that? Well, at, at Jefferson with the different corners, we didn't have okay. Okay. lap traffic there. But at Elko, my spotter was very helpful with me and saw that we were struggling with it and helped me and talked me through the whole thing. And even before I was coming out of, let's say, turn four, and there was a lap car in turn one and two, he was already talking me through it and saying, all right, you're going to roll up on him probably at this point, do this. And he would talk me through the whole thing, which is really helpful but then going into Pocono, we're going way faster than we are in Elko. I mean, I just went from the smallest racetrack to Arca, the Arca Series races on to one of the biggest <laughs> and one of the fastest. So it was very different because the lap traffic was a lot slower. That I had a different spotter for, and he did very well. He talked me through the whole thing. And I don't. Even, he didn't even know that I was struggling with lap traffic. We didn't talk about it, but he did a very good job on helping me, like roll up on them and and pass them on the inside or the outside or follow this guy through. So, so I, it really helps with the spotter talking you through it all. Now I'm I'm going to take a break there for a second. I'm going to let Mike jump in before I even get into Pocono. I got a lot of questions about Pocono. Uh, Mike, go ahead. Yeah, so, hi, Natalie. I just wanted to ask you a couple of things relating to Pocono because that's the one track I know of being from the east and actually having gone to Pocono uh, for, for once uh, from uh, for a modified race. Uh, I'm interested in your thoughts be, be having raced there for the first time in an ARCA car about the different um, corners because Pocono is known to have, even though it's an oval, um, they call it a triangle because of the three corners and how tricky it is uh, in the, in each of the different corners. Um, how did you, how do you feel you adapted to that, um, that situation with the three corners being so different? Yeah. I now know why they call it the tricky triangle. It is very <laughs> tricky. Three and – well, three. There's no turn four, really. So three was the easiest for me. I got that down right away. And then after that, the tunnel turn then was where I got that corner down. And turn one all the way up until the end of the race or until our tranny went out, um, I was still struggling with turn one. That was the hardest one that I had to figure out and it was the I the entry into one I could keep it consistent enough to set me up coming off so it would just hurt me all the way coming up off of one and it would be like I would get it and then two laps later I wouldn't and then I would get it and so so if I could go back there again I definitely would love to so I can get turn one down because I love the tunnel turn the tunnel turn is awesome (laughs) <laughs> with the straightaway, with that large straightaway, the, that very long straightaway, uh, I'm just curious how much how much of a break can you take as a driver in terms of okay, I just fought my way off the turn uh, and so forth, and obviously going at that speed, it's not like you can you know sit back and take a break, but is there a little bit? Uh, uh, you know, a respite for you as a driver to say, okay, now it's just a matter of going fast. You know, I don't have to do anything special with the car. This is a, you know, this is a long straightaway. Uh, again, not that you can, you know, stop being attentive, but it seems to me like you can, you know, take a little bit of a break uh, from the stress of, okay, what do I do now type of deal. Correct. Yeah, 
the front straightaway is really, really long. So coming down that, you know, you have a lot of time to look at your gauges and look at your mirrors. Um, but other than that, it's really, it's actually almost harder to have that long of straightaway because you can lose focus so much easier. And that's the biggest thing is going down that long front straightaway, I think for me, is it's a mile long and you're coming to one. You can't even see the cones yet on, on one to lift. And then when you finally get there, you're like, it's like 30 seconds later. <laughs> you know, you're just going straight for about 30 seconds. Right. So, yeah. so I think it's actually harder just because you have to get yourself to focus so hard on something that's, that's kind of, it's not simple, but it's a lot simpler than racing like on a, a mile track where you're, where you're constantly almost doing something. Right, and it, and that's interesting that as a driver you took, you know, you took a different course than I thought you would take because to me, and I've you know I've been around racing for a while, wrote about it and so forth. Uh, it's a situation where I was thinking you could take a break more or less, not not again, to you know forget about what you were doing, but that front straight always seemed to me as a as an observer of something you could take a break and say okay, this is just racing, you know, go fast. This is what we do. And you took the opposite thing where you were worried about losing focus, you know, going into the next turn. So that's interesting. Uh, The other thing that came up that I was interested to ask you about, um, because CJ and I touched on it last week a little bit, Uh, I don't even know if as a driver you would know this, and I guess we more or less talk to an owner about this, but the entry list, you weren't listed on the entry list till like the very, it seemed like the very end of the weekend or, you know, in in terms of the very right before the race. Uh, is there a deadline that you have to, you know, put, be put onto the entry list and maybe... Maybe it was because I was talking with CJ and we were thinking maybe it was an error on the part of the ARCA website, which obviously you have nothing to do with, but they didn't list you on the entry list or in the Fantasy League until the very end. And I I was interested in how soon and how quick uh, the drivers have to be entered and is there a deadline or can you be listed up right up until the almost the race occurs or practice occurs. Yeah. Um, with the entry list thing, uh, I had to do the test um, the two days before we raced. We test um, on Wednesday and we raced on Friday. And they had to wait until after that test. Until I'm a rookie. And I haven't been on a track. I haven't been on a track that's bigger than Gateway. Gateway was the biggest track I've ever been on. So I had to pass. I had to pass kind of the test with ARCA before Uh I could get put on the entry list. Well, there we go. There we go, CJ. There's our answer. I was always wondering about that, and obviously you had to be uh, approved for the track, I guess, or approved for the distance. Uh, No, that was interesting because I hadn't seen your name. Um, and for different reasons, we were looking, obviously, and and, I, and the CJ says to me, well, she's there. She told us she was going to be there, and I said, I don't know why she's not on the list, but that that's the answer. Uh, so so that, that, that's, we thought it was more or less art. The fault of the uh, uh, website could have been wrong, and, and you just answered the reason for it. So uh, is there... Based on your performance in these three races, taken as a whole, is there talk about any further, um, you know, ARCA races this year, or or are you currently working on that, or are they working on that, or um, what are you, what are you doing from here on out? Is there any plans? There's there's one more in there. Yeah, we're doing Road America, so that's it for sure. Yes, sir. For this year and you know next year I'd love to do a full season and that's our goal and I I hope we can all make it happen my team right. and everything make that happen because that is the ultimate goal is a full season but we have one more race to look forward to and that's Road America okay. now, 
now I know you said you had to, you had to wait until you did the testing before you could enter. Is there a deadline though? Um, I I don't know if that really got answered. Do you know if there's a deadline? Like you guys had to be you know approved and entered by you know by the time practice begins, call by begins. Do you do you know that answer, Natalie, or is that something above kind of above your pay grade? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know because they knew I was going to be there at the test, and they knew I was going to do the race if I passed the test, kind of gotcha. in a way, you know. So I don't know what the deadlines are or any of that. I assume there would be one, but I have no idea. Yeah, we were we were we were both making sure we was going to pick you on our, our fantasy league, which we both got you on, yeah. uh, on our on our on our on our league. We we have every week that you ran. Uh, but uh, first. First uh, question is, um, when, when we talk about Pocono, I, have, I, I know it's a fast track, and I know that front stretch um, produces a lot of high speed. Have you, have you ever traveled at that speed before um, going to, before you went to Pocono, or was this all new speeds for you as well as it being a new track? Yes, this was the first time I was going that fast. And I remember I was getting – strapped in to my car and there's already cars on the racetrack and you just heard them go by on that front stretch and I looked at that guy that I was putting on my window nut and I was like wow that even sounds fast <laughs> and I was like so nervous and he's like oh you'll be now, fine you'll be fine <laughs> now when, when you was out there turning those laps and then that first lap or two that you was going that steep did it feel like it was that fast or it just seemed that fast when you was outside the car but what you was in it um, it didn't really seem that fast. Yeah, the first lap, it felt fast. Um, it didn't okay. feel as fast as I was going, and it definitely looks a lot faster when you're watching. Um, but once you're in the car, the track, you know, the faster you're going, the bigger the racetrack, and it's just all, it's just like all blends together. You know, you don't you don't realize how fast you're going. Now, Pocono, um, and I don't want to take the, the uh, the importance of the other tracks, obviously the other tracks that you've been you know, up and going to Road America are, are helping build your your um, your experience to continue your career. But Pocono is one of those tracks that is on the Xfinity Series. Uh, well, it was this year. I think it was the second time they ran there. But on the, the, the Sprint Cup Series, the Monster Cup Series um, schedule, and, and obviously that's your ultimate dream it is being out there on Sunday afternoon with tough guys and girls. Um, when you go to a track like Pocono that is on the series, um, is is it a different feeling for you? It is it's a little bit different versus these other tracks that the cup guys never go to, or is it just the same for you out there? Um, you know, racetrack to racetrack, even though some I haven't been on in there. Yeah, it was just it was another racetrack to me. I mean, it was cool that they were all there and everything, and and but when I was there, I, I was just thinking that, that just another racetrack. <laughs> I just wasn't sure, but it was one of those things that you know this is what the guys this this is what they drive on. You know, this is not the local Toledo track. This is Pocono. This is something that you know if my dreams come true. You know, this this one of those tracks that I'm going to be back at. So. Um, I, you know, I, I didn't know if drivers had different feelings about different tracks and, and knowing that you know, this, this is the next big step kind of track. Um, pit, pit stop. Well, it was, um, it was cool to see. It, it was cool to see, you know, the Xfinity guys and the Cup guys there while I was there. And that was really cool. And that, like, made me, like, even think more, like, wow, like, okay, I'm here and I want to be over there, like, where they are in those garages. So, so that was really cool. But you know, when I was out on the racetrack, it was it was just my racetrack, and only racetrack. Gotcha. Um, did you get an opportunity to uh, talk to any of the uh, other drivers in the other series, or was you know so much going on with what you had going on, plus them just kind of getting there at that point in time? Um, was there not much time for that? Yeah, there was not a lot of time at all. Every day I was at the track, I was either in the race car, doing PR stuff, autograph sessions, so. There wasn't a lot of time to go talk to anyone. I wish there was, though, because I probably would have. Matt, I um, have a question based on, um, sorry, CJ, um, about, uh, you know, we talked about the configuration and the turns and everything. They were talking the top series 
about how in the pitch stop, if you had a fast pitch stop, you didn't lose a lap because of the configuration of the track and the long straightaways and so forth. Uh, did you ever run, did you run into that in your in your race in terms of uh, you know if you pitted then not losing a lap or being on the same lap because of the configuration of the track itself? Um, we yeah we did pit. I I was speeding on the last like segment of the pit road. I think I was like one mile an hour over, and we got a penalty for that, and that's what really hurt us then in the race at Pocono, and then it kind of went downhill from there. Then we so we lost a lap because we had to come back down pit road, and then our tranny went out. But but it, I learned a lot through the whole race, and, and we were running good all day, better than I thought we were going to do, and, and my crew chief was happy, and I was really happy. Right. I was just wondering about that, if it played a role in the ARCA race as well, because they made, they made, a, they made a statement, you know, about it, on during the cup race and I think even during the Xfinity race about drivers pitting and not necessarily losing a lap because of the configuration of Pocono. So I was wondering if it came into play um, during the Arca race as well. Yeah, I, I lost the lap when I came back down pit road for for my panel. How, right. how long does... How long does it feel like when you're going down, especially serving the penalty, knowing that you got to go back down pit road? How long does it feel like that pit road is when you're going back down there serving that penalty? Oh my goodness, that penalty felt so long. I felt like I, I was going like for three minutes down pit road. It felt like it was never going to end. Um, but but you're going. I think your speed limit was 55, and it felt like I was going 25. <laughs> <laughs> How uh, how far did you end up going over the speed limit? Was it something you just barely went over, or was it just yeah? Uh, I just I barely went over, and it was the last um, like pit wall. The pit wall ends, and then there's a cone, and we had to go until the cone. But right when the wall ended, I started speeding up. Definitely just a rookie mistake. I had no idea. Uh, um, so yeah, I didn't know pit road kept going. <laughs> what was the uh, I, I know this is a hard question because this is a, a different track within itself, and um, the speeds you've never traveled before. I mean, obviously you learn something from the, the pit road, and, um, and, and you know, that's something you'll take away. But outside of you know the the, the pit road, the speeding uh, violation, and, and going to the tunnel from now on, uh, what else did you take away from this race that you feel that you'll be able to use? Maybe not a road America. Uh, being a different type of track, but uh, a familiar track um, down the line. One thing I'll definitely be able to take to um, bigger racetracks like Pocono and faster racetracks is when I would mess up in one corner, I just had to forget about it and just focus on the next because, you know, it's so long. It, It took us 50 some seconds, 50 like, four seconds to get around the whole racetrack. Those were those were about the times. And, you know, on a short track, if you mess up one lap, it only takes about 15 seconds to get around there. So you're fine. You don't lose, you don't lose a lot of time. But in Pocono, you do. And you just, you can't, like, beat yourself up over it because, you know, you're not perfect. People, like, we are going to mess up sometimes. And when I'd mess up, I'd just get so mad. And, like, I couldn't forget about it. And I, I just had to. Um, Road America, when is that race? I believe it's in August. So we we got a nice little break, possibly a nice little break, unless something else comes up. Um, so what are your plans at this point? Are you just going to go back to Wisconsin for a while and run the local track? Or what, what are your plans now until then? Yeah, we got some cool little news coming up before we race Gateway. And that will be this weekend. We're racing Gateway with the Arca Midwest Tour. So that's our next race. And then and then we'll just, you know, do a few local races in the Arca Midwest Tour and tell Road America. Um, anyway, you, you stay so big on 
seems like uh, every time I see a picture, that was just like the, the, the one post you posted where I think you were asleep. It's uh, somewhere in between Elko and Pocono. Um, and I think there was a dog in the picture or something. Um, and I, I think a lot of times people don't think I keep up with people and follow them. And, uh, um, and uh, I know I've said this before. Natalie, you have no choice but to keep up with Natalie. Uh, she she makes sure that uh, you you are well aware of what's going on and where she's at and everything else. But, um, I, you know, I, I compared her many times to Danica and her social media. Um, Natalie, Natalie, you do an excellent job with that. There, there's no doubt that there's no for no reason nobody knows what's going on with you and where you're at and what's going on. Um, I, I think our next guest is uh, someone else that does a phenomenal job with that, and that's Hannah Newhouse. Uh, she's coming on here in about 30 minutes, and, and keeping up with her and, and watching her social media as well is always entertaining. Um, Natalie, I want to uh, – I, I know I say this every time, 30 minutes is why so dang on quick. Um, I, I want to uh, wish you the best of luck. Congratulations on, on the free rate you've got to do so far. Um, hopefully maybe something opens up between now and then that uh, uh, you're, you you get more opportunities to get more speed time as you know next year if you want to get that full time ride. But uh, definitely want to wish you luck um, going to Road America and uh, all the all the Parka other events the the mid mid Atlantic or mid whatever you call them and I'm kind of confused on what the difference is. <laughs> uh, I, I think you I think you explained this before. What exactly is the difference between the Arca Regular ARCA series and the other ARCA series. So the ARCA series is, like, kind of national. It kind of follows, like, the Cup series. You know, it goes to all the bigger tracks and all over the place. And then the ARCA Midwest Tour is a completely different car. It's a super late model, and it's just up in the Midwest. Now, do they have ARCA Mid Midwest, or um, you said Midwest, but... Arca uh, South and Arca East and other divisions in, in this, or it just they're just an Arca Midwest and that's it. I I think it's just an Arca Midwest tour. Um, but I, I think we 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 kind of had concluded that discussion before. I just couldn't remember. Uh, but good luck on that on that as well. Um, keep keep us in, informed. Um, obviously keep doing what you're doing on social media. I, I love following the chronicles of Natalie and. Um, everything else that you go and have going on, um, it, it definitely makes it easier for us to keep up with everything that's going on. Um, look forward to uh, talking to you again, uh, maybe after a minute of uh, Road America. Um, always always intrigued to hear about you and, and these new tracks that you get to go to and the new experiences, um, not just read it, but actually uh, get, get to have you on and, and talk about it. Um, but uh, wish want to wish you the best of luck and you enjoy the rest of your evening and look forward to uh, having you back again. Thank you.